Hi, this is Caitlin with KMK Designs. Today we're going to talk about a new pattern we're actually releasing for the Rose Quartz cosplay. This is kind of an exciting thing. This is a first pattern that we are releasing. We've been sewing cosplay commissions and bridal gowns and all sorts of other costuming things forever, but this is the first pattern that we've released for sale. This video is just to help a little bit. It is uh, intermediate to advanced pattern. We don't recommend it for people who've just started sewing. It does involve things like a very structured bodice, corset making, hoop making, crinoline making. Uh, it deals with a lot of different fabrics such as tulle, matte satin, canvas, interfacing. So if you're not very familiar with sewing, it is not recommended. You know, you can see if you can get a friend to help you if you still want to tackle it, but it is for somebody who's maybe done this a little before, at least on a few projects. So anyway, let's get right into it. So the pattern we're releasing has two different sizes. Uh, we didn't grade the pattern, but it is somewhat flexible since the back is adjustable. Uh, it is split into three different pieces. So the top is an over corseted dress. Then it has a skirt with all the petals attached to it and then an under hoop. You can, because I've already been getting this question, can use your own hoop, but it isn't what we recommend only because the skirt is actually fitted to the shape of the hoop and the length and the width and how much boning you put in it. You know, you can alter the skirt to fit a hoop you have. So if that's something you feel comfortable with, then definitely do that. I do also recommend making a mock-up for this. So a mock-up is just making it up in like a test fabric. So pick a fabric that's less expensive, make it up. You don't even have to make it up that nicely just to get an idea of the fit. You know, if you are using your own hoop, get an idea if it's going to fit okay over that hoop. Uh, if the length is going to be okay. We do have spots and where to like lengthen and shorten since height is going to be all over the place for sure. So all right, so let's just jump right into it. So for the top, when you're cutting it out, you're actually going to lay down four layers of canvas, two layers of fashion, two layers of interfacing, and two layers of lining. It seems like a lot of layers, but it really helps with the structure. I wouldn't skip any of those layers. Um, the canvas is actually going to go down all the way to the first, that white petal. Um, that just helps give structure. It helps um, not help the boning not show when you're putting in the boning later. Uh, you can see here in some of the pictures I didn't put it down all the way. Uh, I just discovered later it's just easier to put it all the way down. So you get to learn from my mistakes and what I had to redo. <laughs> it's part of the whole patterning process. And then you're going to iron the interfacing directly to the fashion fabric. Um, you want to make sure that you get a lot of heat on it. Uh, you can also use sewable interfacing. I find fusible just easier. Uh, we use a Trico. Um, it's see-through lightweight. You can use other styles. That's fine. Um, and I have a little video too of just ironing it all on. You want to make sure that you're really slow at it. Um, this step, it doesn't seem like it's that important, but it's actually super important. If you don't iron them enough, they don't stick well enough, you're just going to get like a ton of puckering later. The interfacing will actually separate from the pattern. And you're going to do this interfacing also on all your petals too. Uh, it just makes them lay a lot better. It makes them a lot easier to work with. It's just kind of like it's basically giving some strength and structure to your fabric. Uh, you can, I mean, if you really want to, you can skip it. But I super don't recommend it. You're not going to be as happy with the final result. So, and here I'm showing all the different layers, how you stack them when you're... Um, ironing all your layers on the top part, you're actually going to separate them out into two. So you're going to have your fashion, your interfacing, and then a layer of canvas. And then your other layer is going to be lining and canvas. So it's actually going to create two different layers that you're then going to kind of sandwich together all in the end to create your bodice corset. And that's kind of like so your lining in a corset in a structured bodice is a lot more intense than just like a normal lining. All right, so this photo and video are showing the one of the different layers I was talking about. So this layer has the fashion interfacing and canvas, and then your other layer is just going to be canvas and lining. They're going to look kind of identical, except for they have different components to it. Ignore where I'm pointing at that. I, that's when I thought I still had to get rid of the canvas, so it's not important. Um, since I changed that later. Uh, half inch seam allowance uh, here on the other side um, is showing how it looks on the fashion side when it's all put together like that. Uh, I pinned it so because you have all these different layers together you either have to flatline or pin them a lot to make sure they don't shift and move because they're three or two different layers put together they're not necessarily going to act like one fabric so you want to make sure they don't shift and move while you're sewing them together. 
If you do want a flat line, that just means you sew around all the edges of your different fabrics. So like you'd sew the canvas and the fashion together before you'd actually put the different pieces together to make sure that they don't shift. Quick right here I'm showing you can actually put another lining into that fashion layer just to make sure that the white, like if you have a white that's a little see-through because white fabrics tend to be a lot, uh, you can make sure through that that it's not going to show through. So it's an extra layer within those two, the canvas and the fashion and the interfacing. Sorry if that's a little confusing. It's just adding another layer in there. And I do that a lot just to ensure that there's no see-throughness in anything we make. I don't... For this particular, if you use like a heavy satin, it's not super necessary. It's really depending on, you know, if you want to put in all those safeguards, if you're on a budget and you don't want to add another, you know, couple yards of fabric to what you're buying, then you could probably go without it. The close up here and kind of what I missed when I was talking about the other thing is the next step is on the fashion uh, side only that you're doing, the fashion fabric side only, you're going to top stitch or edge stitch along each seam. You're going to press the seams. I don't know why I threw that. You're going to press the seams towards the middle um, and you're going to top stitch, making sure that they your seam allowance, because you've clipped it so much, doesn't shift. You're going to make sure that you top stitch all the way down and just make it lie smooth. Now this is the lining and the canvas layer. Uh, this one you do not have to top stitch down each seam, just leave it as is. You're actually going to press open the seams instead of pressing them towards the front. So it's different on the fashion layer versus the lining layer. And this is because you're going to put twill tape on each of these to put your boning in. Again, ignore where I'm pointing in the pink lines because they didn't end up mattering later. Uh, so, and you can kind of, I'm just showing you the stitches. It's good to use a really tiny stitch on this. Not like one, but maybe like a two and a half stitch is a good length to use on this. One more thing before we get to this cool photo. You can actually opt to put in a zipper or to not put in a zipper. Uh, I do show in this video how to put in a zipper. It does make it easier to get in and out of, but it's not necessary. You can definitely like make the um, probably just get into it versus putting enough elastic in the back and making the last the lacing in the back wide enough so that you can get into it so it's up to you so this photo is showing putting in the twill tape which is all marked on the pattern this is where you're going to put your spiral steel boning in here's a video of me putting it on the seam line so on the seams you're going to do two spiral steel so it's going to be a quarter inch spiral steel but you want to make your channel a little wider than the actual quarter inch because otherwise it'll be way too hard to slip them in there will also be a few half inch boning channels that you're going to make in the very front and there's markings for those as well. And the material list should also have how much of those you're going to purchase for the spiral, the lengths for them, and also the widths for those. Oh, and I realized I should have talked about this first. You're only going to be doing the boning channels to that lining piece. So the the one that has the canvas and the lining fabric to it, this is going to be where you put the boning channels on so that it doesn't show on the outside, but it still gives structure to your bodice. And here I'm showing you actually are going to stitch it from the wrong side of the fabric. You want to make sure your fabric doesn't move so it doesn't get caught under there. You can see on the other side, that's how you want it to look. So you're just going to stitch down the middle first. You can even mark it how I marked it and then go on either side and then you will create the channel for the two different spiral steel. After you've added in all your spiral steel, we do actually do a mixed boning method with a sewable boning called Rigeline or Featherlight. It can be sewn directly with the machine. Uh, a couple important things when you do it, you want to make sure you cover the top and the bottom with a little piece of canvas. Otherwise, the fibers are so strong that they'll cut through your fabric, but it won't do it if you sew the canvas to it, like a little piece on either side. You actually cut it to length, mark where you're going to put it, all those marks are on the pattern, and then sew it all the way down with your little pieces of canvas covering either side to make sure that it doesn't poke through the fabric over time. I realized I almost missed one other thing. There's actually three types of boning, uh, flat steel spiral and rigoline. The flat steel is really important for the very front and the very back. It just has more structure and more strength to give a lot of support. And it's marked on the pattern. Um, the ones in the back, you actually are going to sew through all the layers of fabric and there's some spiral channels that you're going to sew through all the layers of fabric and they're marked on the pattern so hopefully they're clear how to do that. So this video is showing how to put in a zipper. A zipper is optional. It does make it a lot easier to get in. I do recommend it. Uh, you put it on the left hand side on the fashion fabric layer. 
So you want to make sure when you're putting all the layers together that you have you leave that part open on the lining and the fashion layer. Use a zipper foot when putting it in. You will be so thankful that you did that. <laughs> um, how we do it is you iron back each side that we're going to put the zipper in a half inch. You clip them to make sure any curves are going to lay smoothly. You're not going to get any puckers. And then you're going to top stitch it while it's pinned in. Uh, so be careful when you're doing it. You can see I'm doing it here. And this is actually at the very edge. So you put in your zipper and then at the bottom where it's going to go together, you're going to spin your zipper foot around. So you're actually going to need to connect the bottom of the petal of the white layer, so it's that's your top layer, up to that point where you want to stop the zipper. And then afterwards you're going to go and press it and then go and top stitch all the way around. You can see here I'm showing where you put it together and there's the bottom of the zipper. You do want a pretty thick zipper. You don't want just like a normal dress or pant zipper, like a jacket zipper is better or a bridal. Uh, number five coil zipper is what we use. It's a lot stronger than a normal zipper. Uh, so it's not just like, just it will hold up a lot better. If you buy a cheaper or lightweight zipper it's not gonna hold up as long and then it's kinda gonna ruin the point of putting in a zipper. Alright so this is instructions for how to cut out these petal pieces. This is the petticoat, this is the skirt base. The petals and the underlining of the skirt are on the same piece. Um, you don't really want to cut out these petals which is marked by the pink, the orange, and the red, and these overlap each other, so that's why they look a little confusing. The best thing to do is either take some tracing paper and trace these out, or if you don't want to do that, you can lay it on your fabric. You can go under, put pins in them, or put little holes and mark with chalk where they are, and then cut them out on the light pink, the dark pink, however you want to do it, and the colors you chose. So that's how to do the petals. In that video, video, it is also marked on the pattern, but you cut all the petals on the fold. You quite cut a few of them, and you're actually cutting them with a lining as well. So ever, all of them are going to be like fully lined, fully interfaced. It gives a lot of structure to them. Okay, so this is a picture of the finished petticoat. Unfortunately, I don't have more in-process steps. As you can see, the lines in it, those are the channels for the hooping. Those are done with a twill tape, the same way that you do the channels for the boning on the top of the corset. Those are just left open at one point, and then you just fish through the hoop boning until it's the shape you want. Uh, sometimes you might have to do um, maybe an extra layer if your hoop boning isn't as strong. So you really want to make sure you get a nice, strong hoop boning. A lot of times on sites, they'll tell like, the weight of it or what it's suitable for. If you want to again use your own hoop that isn't from this pattern, you just want to make sure that you alter your petals to fit that hoop. Uh, this we also put tool on top of it that helps to soften the look of it and to just make it a lot harsh, less harsh of a line and make sure that it doesn't collapse at all. You attach the tool at several different points uh, after you've gathered it and cut it to the right lengths and there's information on the pattern how to do that. This is a photo of how you're going to attach the first petal. Each petal is going to overlap on each other. They're cut long like that so if they move and change around you're not going to see any of the white under layer that you're going to attach it to. So you're not attaching it to the hoop, you're actually attaching it to a piece that is cut to the same size for each of them. And where those petals attach and where they're supposed to lay is marked on the pattern um, before you get to making these, you can also change the lengths of where these are. There are marks on the pattern of where to lengthen them. Since I think both of the patterns we made for quite tall girls, you can alter them to fit you if you're a little bit shorter. Now this is a photo of them all attached together. When you are making them, you're going to be interfacing all of the petals and then you're actually going to be putting the lining and the fashion right sides together, stitching around the edge and then flipping them right side out. And then when you do, you're going to clip all around, like a lot around each curve to make sure that they lay nice and flat like that and iron and iron to make sure that they they lay flat. This picture actually shows them all just kind of pinned on. So if you need to adjust for your hoop, this is a good way to do it is to pin where they're going to go together before you actually sew them all together. 
Well, then that's the end of it. So I hope you enjoyed watching and enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, whether you're using our pattern or going it on your own or doing another gown, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I know it's not a full step-by-step. -step. Um, we can answer questions in the comments. If you have any particular questions you want answers with, we are happy to help. If you don't know how to sew and you just rather commission it, we do take commissions for this gown information in that of course, also below. If you want to support us making more tutorials like this or just love what we do and want to see more, we do have a Facebook, Instagram, and we have a Patreon. Uh, we love support too, but it's, of course, not obligated. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Uh, good luck with your cosplay. Have fun. That's what it's all about. Until next time, bye.